Okay, so just exactly what is a function? In order to understand what a function is, you have to understand three other concepts. The first one is the concept of relations. When you think of relations, what do you think of? I think of like relationships, something between two people. Um, and that's exactly what a relation is. It's something between two things. And that's your ordered pairs, X and Y. So a relation is a collection of ordered pairs, alrighty? Then the next thing you need to know is that the set of all the first components of the ordered pairs is the domain, and the set of all the second components of the ordered pair is called the range. So your set of ordered pairs look like this. So remember, an ordered pair is x comma y, and you have a collection of these. So it may be one or it may be more than one. And so the set of all of the first ones is your domain, and the set of all the second elements is your range, right? So you have to understand those first in order to understand what a function is. So what is a function? So a function is a relation such that each element of the first set, the domain, maps to exactly one element of the second set, the range, okay? So you have a collection of ordered pairs, so you have a relation, and each of your first elements can map to only one of your second elements, all right? So let's look at some examples. So I just wanna start with just some practical examples. So I have two egg looking circles here on my board and I'm, what I'm gonna show you is what's called a mapping. It's where you take each element in your first set and you map it to each element in your second set, the range. And so I just wanna start again with practical examples. So I wanna take cities. So my domain is gonna be a list of cities and I wanna map them to the state that they belong to. So my range will be various states. So if I took Austin, Austin will map to Texas. So I'm going to draw an arrow from Austin to Texas. If I took Dallas, Dallas will map to Texas. If I took Atlanta, Atlanta will map to Georgia. And then if I took Chicago, Chicago will map to Illinois. So if these were the only cities and states in my relation, would this represent a function? So what I'm looking for is, does each element of my domain map to exactly one element of my range? So Austin maps to one, Dallas maps to one, Atlanta maps to one, and Chicago maps to one state. And so therefore, this example illustrates a function. But when will it not represent a function? So now, let's just continue to think about this. If I have a city that maps to more than one state, can that happen? Because that's when it will fail to be a function. So think about this. There is an Atlanta, Texas. Did you know that? It's in East Texas somewhere. And so since there's an Atlanta, Texas, then the city named Atlanta will map to Georgia and it will also map to Texas. And so therefore, now I violate that rule that each element of the domain maps to exactly one element of the range. So Atlanta now maps to Texas and Georgia, so it no longer maps to exactly one. And so now in this case, this would not be a function. Okay, let's take another practical example. So say I took um, men celebrities, male celebrities, and mapped them to their spouse, okay? So I have, and I looked up a few that I know. Tom Hanks maps to Rita Wilson. Uh, David Beckham maps to Victoria Beckham. Will Smith, who is Will Smith married to? Jada Pinkett Smith? Hopefully I spelled that right. Sorry, Jada, if I didn't. Um, and what about Jay-Z? Jay-Z is married to Beyonce. All right, and so each of these map to exactly one so would this be an example of a function? 
So Tom Hanks goes to one, David goes to one, Will Smith goes to one, Jay-Z goes to one. So yes, this is a function because each element of my domain maps to exactly one element of my range. What would this not be a function? This would not be a function if there was a male celebrity who was married to more than one person. So if you think about that, that is not functional to be married to one more than one person. So in order to be functional, each X can only go to one Y. So again, this is an example of a function. Okay, so now let's put some numbers. Let's add some numbers into it. So now we want to know if this relation defines a function. And so what you can do is you can create a mapping just like what I had illustrated up here earlier with our practical examples. Again, these are little egg looking things in mind. I know they're, don't talk about my shapes. I know they're not quite eggs, but it's as close as I can get. So this would be my domain. My domain would list each of my X elements or my first elements and my range will list each of my second elements. So first I would have three, three maps to one. So I would draw an arrow from three to one. Then I would have two, two maps to five. Then I would have negative four, negative four maps to two. Then I would have a negative one, negative one maps to zero. And then I have three again, three maps to negative four. So now I will draw an arrow from three to negative four. Now, does this represent a function? So remember what it means to be a function. Each X can only go to one Y. So if I start here, does this only go to one Y? No. This actually goes to two y, so this goes to one and negative four, and all it takes is one bad apple to spoil a whole bunch. If you find one x that maps to more than one y, then it fails to be a function. So this is not a function. So you can also look at the graph of something and determine if it's a function by using what's called the vertical line test. The vertical line test says, I want to draw vertical lines, and that's lines that go straight up and down. If each vertical line passes through the graph in only one spot, then my graph, it represents a function. But if I can draw a vertical line that passes through the graph in more than one spot, then it is not a function. And again, all it takes is one bad apple to spoil the whole bunch. So all you have to do is find one line that will pass through that graph in more than one spot, and it will fail to be a function. So for example, if I had a graph that looked like this, I had a graph that was u-shaped like a parabola and if I took I'm gonna take a different kind of marker a blue marker and just drew vertical lines no matter where I draw that vertical line you see it's only passing through the graph in one spot in one point and because it only passes through the graph in one point then that means this graph actually represents a function my lines are a little crooked but you get the point right so I'm going drawing straight lines up and down and all of them only pass through the graph once. And so therefore this graph would represent a function. So for example too, we want to look at these graphs and determine if they are functions or not. And so I'm going to use the vertical line test because if it's a graph, you want to use the vertical line test to determine if it's a function. So I'm going to take a blue marker and I'm just going to draw vertical lines. And if you notice, no matter where I draw the line, it's only passing through my graph at one point. Even when it looks like the graph is going directly straight up, it's not. The further it goes up, the wider it's getting. So even if I draw vertical lines here, it's still going through the graph in only one point. And so therefore, this one is a function. Alrighty? Now if I come over here, if I just draw one line here, check this out. It now passes through the graph in more than one spot. And so because it passes through the graph in more than one spot, that means I have an x value here that maps to two different y values values and so therefore this one fails to be a function therefore this one fails to be a function because i have one x that maps to more than one y and so that's how you look at the graph and determine whether it's a function or not on example three we want to determine if y squared equal x is a function so now we have an equation and we want to see if it's a function so what we want to think about is if I plug in the number for x, will it map to only one y? So when you're dealing with equations, you always want to solve them for y. So the first thing I want to do is solve this for y. In order to solve this for y, I have to get rid of the square. So to get rid of a square, you take the square root of both sides. And remember, whenever you take the square root of both sides, you have to take the positive and negative square root. So you're left with the square and the square root cancel. You're left with y over here, 
and you get plus or minus the square root of x. So if I was to create a table where I plug in x values and y values, I plug in x and see what I get out for y. If I just pick the number to plug in, I don't pick a number I know the square root of, like 4. If I plug in 4 for x, then look what happens. I get positive and negative square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So I get positive 2, but I also get negative 2. And so since this x value 4 maps to two different y values, then this fails to be a function. This is not a function because I could plug in one x value and get out two y values. Okay, now you try this one. Tell me whether this is a function or not. Think about what type of equation this is and what the graph of it looks like. So this is a circle that has a center of two, negative one, and then the radius is the square root of this number, so the radius is three. So if I was to plot this or sketch this circle, go to two, negative one, plot the center, and since the radius is three, go out three in all directions, to the right three, one, two, to the left three, from this center point, go up three. So one, two, three, and then from this center point, go down three. So you'll have a circle around, again, imagine that's a nice, perfect circle. You'll have a circle around this center point. Now, and I wanna know, is this the function? So if I was to draw a vertical line here, that vertical line would hit in two points, which means it fails the vertical line test, which means this is not a function. And so that's how you determine if um, an equation is a function. You can look at the graph of it, or you can solve this for y, which you can see this would involve more uh, work. You will solve it for y, and then plug in an x and see if you get one or more than one answer out. So again, a function is a relation such that each element of the first set maps to exactly one element of the second set. And so this is functions, and you wanna make sure you understand functions in order to continue to understand everything else throughout your algebra course. So if you have any questions about functions, make sure you include them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for tuning in.